Hello and welcome to my new screencast. Um, we will cover today ASP.NET MVC uh, or ASP.NET identity. Um, that's kind of cool stuff going on there. It's uh, the complete new uh, reworked uh, framework for doing identity in uh, the scope of web. It's not only MVC, uh, but I showed in MVC. And what I want to cover here is not uh, identity um, as, uh, like, like a basic thing. Uh, it is covered by a few web tutorials uh, around uh, the internet. No, I want to cover a very special thing um, what, uh, um, because I ran into it. I have an existing database. I uh, don't like code first approaches, so I do DB first. I have an existing database context and, and now what? I just <coughs> used, for instance, um, a SQL membership provider in the past and now I want to switch over to uh, ASP.NET Identity and there are some issues um, and it took me a while to, to get a good um, you know, how-to for myself and I just want to share it with you. Okay, what do we have? Mm, it's um, here in, on the screen you see an MVC5 uh, template. I just created it. Um, it's, it's very fresh. The only thing I added is uh, this entity framework model. I just show you what I mean. It's just some uh, example for a model which isn't mappable like it is to ASP.NET um, identity. It's just a model I used. Um, let's say that's my old database and now I'm at the point that I want uh, to switch over to ASP.NET identity. So what do we have? We have a user table and here are all the entities that are my users. Here is uh, some table which is reference to this. You have here the foreign key between them and when you just assume that this model is in production right now, you uh, can't just switch over to ASP.NET Identity and just start new from scratch and there is where the problem where the problems will start. Let's take a look on the database side first. Um, no, here. Uh, here are the bo uh, those tables. I just have it on SQL Server somewhere and you see we have user and user action and if we try to take a look at user data just a few moments and we should see okay here is my user data it's a little bit simple I know but you see I have a password which is a hash and I have uh, some password question password answer here I have something which is very unique to me it's activation token I need it here uh, it's kind of a user defined model okay and then we have in user action we have some data which is related to a user and of course we want um, to use identity but we want to use it on on our existing model so how can we do this okay the first uh, thing we will notice when we just start this new um, MVC project if I hit F5 and we all know this just to clear out what I where I'm standing in my mind, we can go on to register and or to, to login. Let's say login because I prepared it and I just enter some data I, ent um, I defined before and I just hit OK, waiting, and I'm logged in. Okay, how can that be? That's because the code first approach with it which is by default enabled in ASP.NET MVC, just created another database on the local DB server, which is this one, the default connection, and this uses this structure, which is by default defined by ASP.NET uh, identity. You can see this in the new template starting on, um, basically on the startup CS, the important thing here is this assembly attribute which um, calls this code and which will go here 
into uh, con configure off. Uh, you can go there and you see, okay, this is the basic configuration for authentication. Um, here are commented out some extra features which we will see later. And um, because this is uh, getting called um, at the startup, um, this uh, context is created and we see it in account controller very heavily here. You have a new um, constructor which is the default constructor, you can see it here, and this one uses a new ASP.NET Identity User Manager of Application User. What is Application User? A application User, I go to the go to um, definition, is a class which is uh, provided by the template and it inherits from Identity User. This is a base class out of uh, ASP.NET Identity and as you can see here, it's just um, just uh, uh, defined, no extra stuff here. And you can see that also account controller and user manager are using this application DB context for connecting identity with some kind of DB. And as you can see here, this is this context and this context basically inherits from identity DB context. That's where the magic happens. That's this identity DB context says, okay, um, I have a known structure. I just want this structure here at the point. And that's where the breaking change comes into place because of the identity DB context. Um, I, in my uh, situation, can not just use new tables and uh, move people to new tables. That's uh, kind of unrealistic. So what to do now? First steps I will take is if I have an existing project I just recommend you to uh, create like I did a new fresh template MVC5 because you get all this stuff tangled up, account controller and everything is connected and so on and then you go and include your model like I did. So when you did this you Include a copy of your model, please. Please um, clone your DB and include it. Another thing I have to say first, the only exit I know so far um, to get around this ASP.NET identity stuff is to use a um, um, version of ASP.NET identity which is in pre-release right now. It's version 2.0 and it's not in stable. So be careful, just um, if you want to just test it on your data, don't go productive with it, please. Okay, so as I mentioned this, the first step is to go on and to include the NuGet packages we, know we need. We go to online on NuGet.org, go to include pre-release, that's very important. And now we search for um, identity and we get ASP.NET Identity in pre-release. You see it here. We get um, ASP.NET Identity OWIN um, and all the stuff we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the Entity Framework uh, components. I accept. A lot of stuff. We need Owen, and Owen brings identity core. That's good. And now we need um, the. Uh, I think we need ASP.NET Identity Owen uh, in extra. Do we need it? I don't know. Just leave it here. I just ignore restart now here because Visual Studio uh, says Entity Framework needs an update. I just ignore it. It should work. Okay. So, first step, we included the pre-release. Um, next step, we have to do something on our database. So, when I just compare my, the table ASP.NET users here, as you can see, this is, um, you can see it as the minimum version which ASP.NET Identity assumes that it is defined on the database for a single user. So a single user has an ID, a username, and password hash, security stamp, and dis 
discriminator. So my model, which I'm using, isn't ready for ASP.NET identity, as you can see here. For, for instance, I have what is here username, I call it login. I have not password hash, I have just password, and so on. So I have to do some changes on my user table first to make it ready to go for ASP.NET identity. Those are not breaking changes, um, as you can see now. And I just go and uh, go to open table definition here in Visual Studio. Yes, the design surface is loading problem. I have some problems on doing it in Visual Studio, so I switch over to SQL Server Management Studio. It doesn't matter where I do it. So here you see those both tables. And now I have to do some um, changes. It's a German version you see here. Never mind. Um, I think you know what it is. Okay. First thing I have to do is I just move it a little bit to the side and just open my, uh, like, you can say my target, um, uh, you know, schema here. I have to transform my user table to some uh, sort of uh, this structure. Okay, ID is okay, username instead of login, username, password becomes password hash, and I need some um, additional stuff, security stamp, it is an NVAR car uh, of, I do 254, uh, and um, the discriminator, discriminator, which I use uh, as um, NVAR car 254.2, I leave it, uh, oh, null is, null is, uh, possible, should be possible, and uh, what you can see here is you need um, um, uh, extra fields, uh, for instance the field is confirmed, which is later on very, very uh, important, is confirmed, should not be null, and should have a, s a default of zero, you can see it here, but I just tell you that it's uh, very important, and um, now we have uh, our old structure with um, activation token, something like that, discriminators here, everything is there, and we just uh, did some updates. Now, when I hit save now, it is a breaking change, in, in which I mean is, um, what I mean is, uh, we just can't do um, now updates uh, using our old model. The structure has changed, but the data is still there which means the user data won't disappear just because of the changes. That's the important part. Okay, let's save it. And let's uh, take a look here on this new table. Show table data. Okay. There it is. And now password hash, username, and so on. One big difference before between my model here and the one uh, ex expected from ASP.NET Identity is that ID, this field, if I just hit F4 and take a look at ID is nvarcar. That's because um, ASP.NET Identity uses GeoIDs for, uh, for this ID and uh, that, that's a point where things become a little bit tricky later on because I want to use, as you can see here, big int which means long in uh, C-sharp. So my model is different from the target model, target model, but we come to this place later on. Now the next thing is that I want to um, s uh, uh, explain to the application DB context, no, don't take the default connection because this is a code first um, connection. Go to the web config and show it. This is a code first connection. No, take my the same database connection for your entity framework access like I do with my model. Okay, save it. 
and now we hit F5 and we should uh, see a lot of errors now because this cannot work. Now we uh, just give him an, a model which is mappable uh, to uh, ASP.NET identity, my password, and now it should crash. Yes, you see here is some uh, method on the account controller and this is just going mad because uh, no, none of the tables is available. So here is everything is stopped just because of the string. <laughs> okay, so what can we do now? Um, the second thing we just see on database is that here are just a lot of tables which we don't have. They are, uh, those tables are very important for ASP.NET identity. It assumes that some structure like this is there because um, claims and the combination between login and user and everything like that is um, um, a convention that uh, ASP.NET identity assumes it is covered in the database. Okay, what can we do now? Just switch over to my uh, SQL Server Management Studio again and just go ahead and add a new query and I just prepared it here. So, <coughs> this query um, that uh, inserts five tables to the DBO, DBO schema, the role, the user role uh, with, in, with indices and things like that and so on. Those five tables are directly um, mappable to those uh, tables. You see, one, two, three, no, four tables, oh, sorry, four tables. The user table is already there, four tables we have to add. So when I just perform this TSQL script here, I hope it works. Let's see, yes, successfully, and now I hit ref refresh, I get these tables. You see it's a different structure than the one provided by um, ASP.NET Identity. I just wanted to show not the simplest way but the realistic way because um, as I see it, I have my own conventions on naming things and on putting in into schemas for, for example could be a next step and for uh, you know uh, doing uh, naming of uh, things like constraints I don't want the naming that the default of ASP.NET Identity uses. I want my own stuff. And when I do this, um, there should be a possibility to use this stuff. Before we go on, just let's go to the entity model here and just hit, hit update model from database. And let's say, okay, do this, all tables from DBO, finish. Mm -hmm. Oh, there are errors, okay, probably login, not map, we, I think we have to do an update too, just get rid of this user table and add it again because we did a lot of stuff there. Let's see what's now and let's build this. Yes, that's good. Just ignore this one. And let's see, okay, that's a little bit, a um, lot of stuff. User is the central table of the star schema and we have all the stuff here. We have um, this IDs, um, you know, as big ends, as in 64, it is in store generated pattern identity. Everything for entity framework is fine. And we can build it. Okay, now, this context can can do anything with this because first step um, the complete structure is wrong. Now what can we do? Uh, since this version 2.0 of ASP.NET Identity we are able to not inherit from identity user only but to inherit from identity user you see no, you see we need this package identity sorry for this confusion you saw me leaving out this uh, identity owen in 2.0 
just let's install this too now. I hope this was the thing we need. And now just build it again. Okay, um, now I corrected some stuff, rebuild it. Uh, now let's take a look at identity user. We have the new uh, stuff. Let's go to the definition. Go to definition. And as you can see, identity user is um, um, in intermediate wrapper to another identity user, which is generic and which says, I'm an identity user of string, bar, bar, bar. So what does string mean? If you go here to the generic representation, here you can see string is the key type. Then you have a type for the login, for the role, and for the claim. That's the key point to understand in the new way ASP.NET Identity 2.0 and following are handling stuff. So here you can also see why I said uh, I uh, is confirmed is very important because you can see here is confirmed is um, uh, assumed by uh, identity user. So what can we do now? Instead of just saying we are an identity user because just again to clear it out, this is identity user and identity user is an implementation of identity user <laughs> and it uses string as the type of its ID. So instead of doing this stuff, we just, I just go ahead and copy it. We're just saying no, our application user is an identity user of long. And now we can see here, here are some classes, my login, my user role, my claim. They are um, very simple. I just uh, pass it in. Mm. This is this stuff. It goes, let's say, here. They are very simple. They say just, okay, I'm an identity user role of long because in user role I want to use long respective big int as IDs too. This one is a role which says, okay, I'm a role which uses long as a key and uh, I use my user role which is this one. Okay and so on. You, you have those four entities for the four classes and I just want to rename application user which is the default from MVC in my user. Just to clear out that just naming it the way we want is possible. I just remove this hint and now you can see it uh, in one place. Here are our models. Now our context isn't valid because our application DB context has uh, need this those informations too. I just change it here. It has a kind of different um, uh, way to to say this. He needs the user, which is our my user, the role, which is this one, and so on. Now, when we just try to build this. It crashes because the account controller isn't valid any longer. The account controller now uh, states that we have a user manager of my user, which is not true. We don't have just a user manager of my user. I just show you how we can do this. Prepare this too. We have now a user manager of my user, which uses long as the key which is uh, a new user store of <laughs> here you see those uh, things again which we used and which uses the application db context okay now we got this and just hit build and we again get errors when we go here to this we see that this is not a user manager of my user, but the user manager of my user and long. Just to tell the user manager, no, no, you are not a simple user manager. You are the one which deals with longs as keys. Build again. Now, next error. Go on. 
Here, the property of user manager has to take the key to, but that's not all. Go ahead. Now those things come into place. Don't uh, panic. It's um, relatively easy because get user ID here is an extension method on iIdentity and returns a string. But our user manager expects along at this place. I don't know what's going on with my IntelliSense right now, but just uh, trust me. So I go on and say long.parse. That's not the clean way to do it, of course. But um, just go ahead and do this. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, a way which, which works. Build again. Okay. Convert. Okay, let's go. Long pass and build. There are a few points. You see it's getting less and less. Where was it? I didn't get it. Where are my arrows? Okay. Let's go on and just see here. Long pass. Please. Okay. Go on. Uh, where is it now? <laughs> Error list. Please go to the point here. Long pass. It's kind of simple to make it. It's um, it's not nice, but when you do it once, it's okay. So here is it too. Get logins. Long pass. And what is this one? Uh, just build it again. Ah, here it is. Long pass. And go on. And yeah, it's working. Almost done. Now what we did so far is just, uh, we just switched over from using the normal identity user to one identity user and identity role, which uses long as the key. But that's, that's not all. When we just want, when we hit now F5, uh, some things will go wrong too. Just explain it to you. Next step, I have to add those properties here in uh, my implementation, which are coming from my old model, like activation token, password answer, answer and password question. I just add them as properties because Entity Framework will map them by name to just a second to those properties like this one and this. Okay, got it. Now, um, when I uh, just will use this, I need just a second. I need um, a mapping to uh, my new model. Still, ASP.NET Identity assumes that we have the same structure and the same IDs just because we just wished us to use long and to use uh, an auto-incremented ID doesn't mean that it works. We have to do it. And for making it work, there is a point um, here in the application DB context, because this is an entity context, it, had, it has an override. Just paste it in. The on model creating override. What this enab um, enables us to do is we just can, as you see here, say, hey, dear entity framework, dear model builder, the entity my user, which is this one, uh, isn't in the table ASP.NET users, it is in the table user, and so on. This is a very f the first important point where we tell Entity Framework how our model on DB side looks like actually. Then we go on and say for my user, my role, and my claim, uh, we just say the property ID, which is very important, has a store generated pattern of identity. This is the same as 
we did here or entity framework did for us when we go to id and just hit f4 we see this store generated pattern identity this one this line of code does just the same for the mapping for our identity db context just remember this generates a context for us which we will use like normally the entity framework db context we will use this one to access um, entities like our user action entity which is just some sort of data which is related to user we will use this one for this but for doing ASP.NET identity authentication and things like that we will use the same connection string but another context that's very important a special one so we have to tell this context what we told this context to that's where we make it okay now that this is done and we just hit a 5 because we assume hey should work let's see what happens now oh besides that this one needs a system data entity thank you build it and this one should be in system component model data annotation okay let's assume hope it works yes just a copy and paste problem now if I now will um, log in I have to keep bear in mind that I'm now working against my real database my SQL Server database so I have a Sprinter account there too I know the password too oh, let's just ensure and it should not work because entity type my user is not part of the model in the okay what's going on here um, when we just take a look here and go over to Visual Studio we just have to say that this line of code should solve the error message which comes here so let's see if this line of code gets called just hit a 5 re retry no we don't hit this breakpoint so why why is that okay the point which I told you just five minutes ago that this um, connection string key is the same as you use for the model that was a trap that's a very common trap that a lot of people comes into because they think oh hey I have an entities context I just use this one so why can't we if we go to the web config and I have to make sure you can't read my, my, my password so here it is you see that this one comes with metadata um, uh, resources and that's not um, um, this off sample entities we cannot use this because all the um, you know the uh, creation stuff model creation stuff is already done here we have to use this default connection or rename it to I don't know uh, my connection my identity connection copy this use this one dear identity db context and now let's see if let's save this one too and close it now let's see what's going on now just change the key of the connection string now log in use my credentials waiting it's a little bit slow on this virtual machine but it should work there it is now invalid username or password that's better but the bad thing about it is um, I know that this username and this password I entered are correct so what's wrong now let's go over here and just see what happens there are two things which we have to do uh, to complete this first of all I just go to my management studio again let's see 
here we have off sample and let's just take a look at this table so my grant <laughs> okay um, this table has a password hash and this hash was generated f a few months years I don't know ago by the um, management um, the tools from SQL Server membership provider so in a certain way but the new one uses a different way the new ASP.NET identity just generates hashes in a different way that's the first point which is bad so just let's correct this how we do this um, the first step to accomplish this is to implement a new class the last one I swear which inherits from I know password ha hasher I call it my password hasher and this one is just has an override on hash password it gets a password and just generates a hash and it uh, generates it to base 64 string that's my old logic which I used it isn't the best one it is a very fast one it is a little bit you know smelly but anyway it works hash password works and to, uh, to bring it on it's just overriding the verify hash password method on pass password hasher and just checks if the hashed password and the provided pas password when it, it, it is hashed are the same if yes it returns success otherwise it returns failed that's all at this point the last thing is that we have to explain um, um, to our application that it has to use this my password hasher and that's done in the controller and the moment when we just instantiate our user manager we just can add another property which is password hasher equals to new my password hasher so it's a little bit of a messy syntax here just see if we can get it a little bit better I hate those lines okay it's new user manager and you see we just generate a user manager of my user and long because long is the key this user manager expects a user store which is defined this way and then uh, this store wants the application DB context where to store to and then we get a user manager and user manager has one property and we just use this anonymous constructor and um, uh, we use pass password hasher equals to new password hasher and at this moment this user manager which is passed to this controller and in fact is assigned to this property is our my password hasher and to just see if this works just hit it again oh no it works uh, it, it doesn't work because two things are bad here system text this is cryptography and I think something else is wrong here yeah system and please build it yes thank you I don't know what's wrong with my Visual Studio, but anyway. Okay, login, provide data. And now we get value cannot be now. I just told you, it's, it's another error than we get before. That's the last error. I told you there are two things to do uh, to make it work so um, let's assume that password hashing is done now okay what what is the last thing the last thing is that when we go and look into our table there is a null on security stamp and that's not good security stamp is a field which will change its value when um, the password uh, will uh, be changed by the user when the user email address changes um, short to say when some important data of the user are changed the stamp will change too 
it's like an, an hash uh, to say, and it's, um, it's done in de by default with a GUID. We can take a look at this if we just go on. That's a good idea in any way when you get errors on this, on this issue, and we just want to create a new user. Let's say the user will be test some password register waiting for localhost uh -huh. now we get an error because the email column in our uh, model on the database side doesn't allow null values that's uh, a good point let's clear this out that's another thing that's not our error but let's go step by step okay so what's going on um, we don't have if we just take a look at register we don't ask on registration for email address that's because the uh, old model here doesn't use email address okay so what can we do now we can go to the account view model and let's say okay let's copy this Whoa. let's copy this and say dear no not the manage let's go to the register model here let's go here and say hey you need to provide an email address and it is required yes it is display is email okay and let's say data type is not password it is email address okay step one now in register just copy this one and say label for email email so we just ask the user for email and the last thing in the account controller is to go to the register method here it gets the register model and to say now to our database email equals model dot email so we pass the entered email into our my user so it can be stored okay check it or test it again we want to register just to remember I just go this this uh, strange way to show you that you will forget some uh, things when you work on this uh, on this big issue because it's so much to do but at some point you are through so hopefully I can help you know test test at fbi.gov because there we are working and our password register waiting okay the is locked column uh, is not um, allowing null values okay let's see go to design is locked ah that's true let's give him a default value here in sql server store it and now go hit f5 yes retry it oh yes hello test that was it okay let's take a look at the data now let's close this refresh there it is here's our new account test test fbi gov password hash um, he just entered some stuff and here you see that the security stamp is given and that's a big difference to our uh, point so when we just generate an sql script let's say new query on off test where are you there not azure not today off sample let's say update user that's a keyword so we need to user set security stamp equals to something where security stamp is null one row refresh now we have some sort of stamp 
and now just try to log in with my other user. Now test. Try this one. Yeah, that's it. Now go on. Change the pass the password. of my existing user okay take a look at the security stamp it has changed because I changed my password so where are we now <laughs> what was going on here okay first of all we have switched from one model which was designed for SQL Server membership provider to another model which is ready for um, ASP.NET uh, identity. We didn't lose our data. Uh, the references from other tables to our user table are still working. We can do it later on on our live production system. Uh, and we are able to say, okay, now we want to do the cool stuff we want to go into the point I showed you at the very beginning, app start, go to startup off and say, hey, Google would be cool. Hit it and now just users can come to your page. If you like it or not, they want it. Go on login. Say, hey, I don't want to leave my footprint here on your database. I just want to use Google. And Google says, log in to our site, except that this one should be possible. And now you come back to localhost and you have the ability to say, hey, how would you be called? Register. That's my name, by the way. Okay, um, there is email um, is null because our provider doesn't allow it. That's okay. Let's go over to this place and again go to our user table and say, okay, that's the point where we have to decide that email, ad email addresses can be null. That's a breaking, it is a change to our model, but it is a change to accept Google, Pl Google Plus as an authentication too. It is a change of requirement, so this is okay. We try and yeah, here I logged in with Google and now just take a look at the database. There is a third account, uh, this one. You see this is the username on our site, but we ha don't have any information um, because this information is stored at the Google database and we see uh, that it's just an user which authenticates using um, OData or not OData, um, uh, you know, OAuth or something like that, OpenID. So um, that, that is the reason why we did all this stuff, exactly the reason, because we want to um, use this uh, new open ID features and so on and we want to see how it works uh, how can I change my open ID account to a normal account by providing a password and so on um, here for instance you have to add a field normally to add an email address so that everything is normal like a normal re registration and so on but that's not the point I hope I could show you, even if it was a little bit confusing and jumping here and there, but I don't know how to make it better. I hope I could show you how you can come out of this trap. Please be aware, don't use it before it gets stable. It isn't stable right now, so you can switch to big end or long as primary key fields, but it works. Okay, thanks for listening and bye.